In today's tutorial, we're gonna be tackling the subject of volumetric lighting in Blender. Now, this is more of a beginner's tutorial. If you already know about it, you might not wanna watch this, but if it is new to you, have a look at this. Here you can see is that same scene with volumetric lighting. This is gonna add a fantastic flair, a much more artistic vision to your artwork. Now, the thing is, you're not always gonna be using volumetric lighting. There are gonna be specific instances, like for example here, where we have a light coming down from a hole in a cave, what we're trying to make. It's definitely fit for purpose here and it makes it look fantastic. So I'm gonna go step by step. We're gonna set up a scene. I won't be adding in this guy in our tutorial, but I'm gonna show you where I got them. And it's actually really simple to get access to this. But the main thing we're making here is this scene. I'm gonna show you step by step how simple it is to set up some volumetric lighting in Blender step by step. So let's jump into this tutorial. We get to the tutorial in just a split second. I almost forgot, this is my second channel, Pixo Creative, where I do step-by-step -step drawing tutorials. It's in the description below. I'm gonna put a link there, check it out. If you guys wanna watch some of the content or subscribe, I'd really appreciate it if you've been following some of my other stuff. So I'm just gonna jump back into the tutorial. Let's get started. So I've got a new scene open up in Blender. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select all of the default objects and I'm just gonna press delete to get rid of them. We're gonna start by going Shift A, under our mesh options, we're gonna add in a plane. We're gonna tab in to edit mode with all of this topology active. We're gonna go S, eight, and press enter. So we scale it up eight times. And if you're wondering why we did that in edit mode, it's so we don't affect the scaling. Cause when we scale in object mode, we have to always apply the scale for certain things and then it just wastes time. So that's where I'm gonna be doing that. So we now have this plane that's eight times bigger. We're gonna actually back in edit mode, just with it all active, right click and click subdivide. And under the subdivisions, let's give that something like 45 and let's close that box and let's tab out. Now that it has all of those divisions, that'll enable us to go over to our modifiers with this plane active. I want to go add modifier. I want to go over the under the deform here and just get a displace. We're now gonna head over down to the texture properties with it still active and click new. And let's give that a cloud. We're then gonna come here to the size and uh, let's increase that. Um, you can only drag it up to two meters, but if you actually click on it by clicking, you can actually go 12 or type in whatever. So let's just go something like 12, okay? So we now have 12. And then we're just gonna head over to this modifier properties tab and let's go to the strength and let's increase it. So now we have something that looks like this. And if you actually go into your front orthographic view by pressing one, um, hopefully you get something that looks like this where we have one high side and a little bit of a lower dip. If you need to, you can rotate it around, but we just kind of are looking for like something with a high end and a little bit of a valley like that. We're gonna right click and go shade smooth. We're now gonna go shift A, we're gonna add in another plane, tab into edit mode once again, S8 to scale it up eight times. And let's tab back into object mode. Let's move it up to about here. And let's go shift A, let's add in a cylinder and let's move it up. We're then gonna select our plane. We're gonna go to our modifiers. Let's give it a Boolean, click on an eyedropper and then select the cylinder. Come to the drop down and apply. Now select the cylinder and then go X and delete that cylinder. Now we have a hole from the Boolean operation we've applied. We can actually now go and um, give this a remeshing modifier under the modifiers. Now you can see it's remeshing it. And what we're gonna do on top of that, we're also gonna add a displacement and it's gonna make it thick by default because it needs um, to be like that. So all we're gonna do is come here to the strength and just bring it down. We're also gonna go down to our texture properties. Once again, clicking new. Now let's give that a cloud. Now let's make the scale something like eight. Let's go back to a modifier and let's increase the strength over here. And you're gonna see it does something like that, which is fine, I don't really mind. We're just looking for something that looks kind of like organic and rocky. Uh, maybe let's go with something like that. And up here, enable um, smooth shading. Let's make this 0 0.05. And now that's looking great. So now we have a hole up here at the top. It's got a little bit of displacement. Yes, it's intersecting with itself, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we don't really care about that. So let's go into our front orthographic view, like so. Shift A and go down and go to the camera option, selecting the camera. You're then gonna go over to your 
render properties, I believe, or actually your output properties. And let's go over here and make it 1200 at the top. And let's go with 1500 at the bottom. That's what I like to work with for this sort of thing. I'm gonna go G, Z and move it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna go into my right orthographic view and I'm gonna move it back along the Y like so. We're now gonna press zero to go into camera view. And what you can do here is you can actually select this uh, roof over here, just bring it down to about here. And then you can always select your camera and move it over a bit. We're just trying to get a position where we have this hole in the roof and we have this sort of drop over here. Once you have that done, what you're gonna do, is you can go Shift A, once again, just adding in a primitive. Let's go with the Suzanne monkey head. Let's go and subdivide that with a subdivision surface modifier, bumping it up, right click, shade smooth. And now let's go G, Z and move it up. And uh, I might actually scale it down just a little bit, like so. And I'm gonna double tap R while I'm camera view, just looking at my monkey. I'm gonna rotate it a little bit, something like this I think looks great. Now for my original, I added in a little dude here. Um, all I did is I went to the internet and I signed into my Adobe Mixamo account, which by the way is free. You can create one today. It's just www.mixamo.com. And I just got a character that I wanted. Uh, you can pick any one you want and then I just click download. I then took that camera, that uh, character into Blender by going to file, import, and I imported the FBX. And then I just used a rig that came with it and I just posed it. So that is very easy to do. And I've covered it heaps of times and there's a lot of tutorials on it. So I'm not gonna cover it just now, but you can see here, this is what I did in my original. So you guys can go ahead and do that exact same thing. You can add any of your own characters in here as well. The main idea here is just to have something cool to look at. We're then gonna go Control B while we're in camera view. We're just gonna drag a box over the camera and that's just gonna limit our rendering when we're in cycles to our camera and that's just gonna increase our performance a bit. We're then gonna go over to our render settings. We're then gonna change it to cycles. If you have a GPU, I'd recommend you enable that. And let's go over to our render samples. Let's go with something a little bit higher than usual because we do, we are dealing with volumetrics, so it's quite noisy. And I find using the denoiser kind of makes, thing, makes it look a bit washed out. So we're just gonna go with something like 500 and turn off the denoising. And now that we have all of that set up, um, just go ahead and save somewhere on your computer. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna press Z and we're gonna go rendered. And at this point, we're gonna go to our world settings and let's just make it really dark by making it all the way down to black. I'm gonna go Shift A, we're just gonna add in a area light. And let's go G, Z and move it up till it's on top of the hole. And let's go to our light settings. Let's give it a strength of 1200 or maybe even 800. Let's just try 800. And let's make it blue. You can make whatever color you want. And I'm gonna move it up higher to about here and maybe even rotate it a bit. So now what you can see here is we have this kind of sharp, ugly light. There's nothing about this that actually looks too good. Let's just also quickly grab the floor here. Let's just go over to our shading workspace. Let's go into our camera view. Let's just go Z and then go rendered. And let's click on new over here. Shift A, search, and let's just get a noise texture. Plug the color into the base color here. Shift A, search, get a color ramp. Place it on this cable and let's uh, drag these two values together. Let's actually feed that into a bump. So we're gonna shift A search and get a bump. Let's take that color and plug it into the height and let's take that normal and plug it into the normal of the principled. And then disconnect it over here from the color and let's just make this dark. Kind of like a brownish kind of color. And uh, what I'm gonna also do is I might go to my world and just make it kind of like almost grayish, but not fully black. So more something that looks like this. And also under our scale here for the noise, let's just drag that up. And now you can see that coming through a little bit better. Let's drag that strength down. And let's just bring that roughness down as well, just so we have a little bit of texture here. But as you can see, all of this is looking uh, pretty terrible at this point. Let's just also select our roof and just give it that new material we created. And now we have some texture coming through, but this is purely just to demonstrate volumetric. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna make this look a lot better by going Shift A, we're gonna add in a cube as our volume object, we're gonna scale it up. 
And then we're gonna go S, Shift, Z, and that's just gonna scale it on the X and Y, like so. We're gonna make this about the same size as what we're as seen here, something like this. Maybe a bit flatter. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and give it a new material. And uh, let's actually come over here to our material properties and under our surface here, let's just go and make that a volume by pressing V over here. And there we have a volume principle, a principled volume plugged into it. But we just wanna make sure that this volume is actually going to the volume of the material output. And now if we go into a camera view and you press Z and you go rendered, you're gonna notice that it's a mess. So we're gonna come here to the density and make it 0.12 as a start. And we're gonna come here to transmission strength and make it 0.1. Or actually let's just take it all the way down to zero. So take the emission strength all the way down to zero. And let's take this color here and make it a little bit lighter. So now we have the volumetric light coming through. And you can already see what a difference this makes. So let's come to our world environment. Let's make it a little bit darker like so. And at this point, what we're gonna do, we're gonna grab our light over here. And, uh, and also, if you actually wanna see um, under through this box in your solid view, you can just select the volume box, go over to your object properties and go under to the viewport display and under display as just make it wire. So now you can actually see through it while you're working. But the idea here now is to grab this light and at this point you can duplicate it, you can rotate it and you can try different kind of angles here, but you kind of get the overall idea here. Just by doing that, we've really made this scene look a lot better. If I were to select this volume box here and hide it, you can see this is what it looks like. If I unhide it, this is what we have. So let's give this a little render. So let's just save and let's give this a test render. Go to render, render image, and let's see what we have. And here you can see is the final result. Now, like I said, this was not about so much making a scene, even though we made one. It's more about demonstrating the point of how effective volumetric lighting is. Obviously, the posing here and the way things are positioned and even the materials are kind of lacking, but it's more just to demonstrate the point of volumetric lighting. So I hope you guys are able to take something away from this tutorial and use this. If this is new to you, you're a beginner, I hope you're able to use this volumetric lighting technique to make some of your renders really pop. So I'll see you guys next time for another Blender tutorial.